Hey there, my name is Salandrak and welcome back to my Terraria version 1.4 Journey's End Beginner's Guide series. This episode is all about the boss of the underworld, the Wall of Flesh. And just like all my other boss guides, we'll go over spawning the boss, fight mechanics, and strategies for all classes and difficulty levels. Timestamps are down in the description and be sure to let me know down in the comments if you have any preferred methods against this boss that maybe I didn't cover. Now let's get to it! There are basically two ways to spawn the Wall of Flesh and both of them require you to, simply put, be a terrible person. That's because both ways require you to murder your guide NPC. Method 1, which is what I usually do, requires you to drop a guide voodoo doll into the lava of the underworld, which will kill your guide and immediately summon the Wall of Flesh. The voodoo dolls always drop from voodoo demons in the underworld, which hold the doll with their feet, but these demons are somewhat rare, so you might need to hang out in the underworld for a while before seeing any. Just be advised that you don't have to be the one to drop the doll into the lava to summon the boss, so be careful when killing voodoo demons, for if they die above the lava, the wall of flesh will still be summoned. The other way to summon the wall of flesh is to let your guide get killed while in the lava in the underworld. This is most easily done by making a house for him in the underworld above some lava and placing actuators on the floor and wiring them to a switch. Then just flick the switch and watch him fall to his doom, summoning the boss when he eventually perishes. Both methods can only be used if there is a guide currently living in your world, so if you're planning on farming the boss, start the fight shortly before morning as NPCs do not respawn during the night. And be sure to check your map or NPC housing menu to make sure you have a living guide before tossing any more dolls into the lava. Once summoned, the Wall of Flesh will spawn about 75 tiles off to the side towards whichever end of the world you are closest to and will then proceed to move towards the other end. Being anywhere near the boss will give you the horrified debuff which will cause you to instantly die if you leave the underworld, so don't use your magic mirror to try to escape from the boss. Unlike many bosses, the Wall of Flesh will not despawn if you get too far away from it, but it will despawn if there are no players alive in the underworld. This includes logging out while the boss is active, which is the only way to safely escape from the fight. As for the fight itself, because the wall will constantly be moving from one side of the world to the other, you likewise will need to be constantly moving. Coming into contact with the wall will deal damage to you, and to prevent you from getting to its other side, it will use its tongue to pull you back in front of its mouth, preventing all item use while the tongue debuff is active. So don't even try to get behind it. At the start of the fight, the wall will have a whole bunch of small mouths called the Hungry that are attached to the wall with little tendrils. These things will get in the way of attacks against the wall if you aren't using a piercing weapon, and their damage and defense go up as the boss's health goes down. So it's a good idea to clear out most if not all of them in the early stages of the battle, though on expert or higher they can respawn during the fight. Once defeated, they will detach from the wall and move towards you, flying around much like demon eyes on the surface at night. The detached hungry always drop a heart on classic difficulty, but on higher difficulties they only have 20% chance to drop them. As for the wall itself, although it visually goes from the top to the bottom of the screen, you can only damage it by hitting either of its eyes or its mouth. Hitting the eyes is preferable as on classic difficulty the eyes have no defense while the mouth has 12. On expert and master mode these values go up to 18 and 6 for the mouth and eyes respectively. Probably the biggest danger of the fight is failing to move fast enough, particularly towards the end, and getting run over by the wall. Contact damage with any part of the wall does 50 damage on classic, scaling to 150 on expert and 225 damage on master mode. As the wall's health goes down, it will start to move faster and faster. In classic difficulties, it's still not very fast at top speed, but on expert and master mode, you best be keeping your distance and moving at top speed yourself in order to not get run over. And since good mobility is pretty much always a good thing in this game, on all difficulties, you'll probably want to have lightning boots or better, and a magiluminescence, and enough DPS to kill the wall as it reaches its top speeds in the final moments of the fight. 
Other than keeping your distance from the wall itself and avoiding the hungry, the only other dangers you'll have to contend with are lasers that the eyes will periodically shoot at you and leeches that the mouth will burp out every now and then. To avoid the lasers, you'll generally want to jump up and down and dodge them, Though towards the end of the fight, this will become more challenging as their frequency and rate of fire will go up. As for the leeches, they usually don't cause much of a problem and will typically get destroyed by your attacks anyways. Once defeated, the loot from the boss will be contained within a frame of blocks corresponding to your world's evil biome, and it will always include a pwn hammer, which will be needed to smash evil altars to bless your world with the new hard mode ores. As of the 1.4.3.3 update, the wall will always drop one of the four class emblems, which increase weapon damage by 15% for each of the respective classes, and it will always drop one weapon of either the Breaker Blade for warriors and fans of Final Fantasy VII, the Clockwork Assault Rifle for rangers, the Laser Rifle for mages, and the Firecracker Whip for summoners. These are all okay weapons for starting out in hard mode, but you'll quickly want to upgrade to better stuff, which I'll cover in the next episode in the series. On all difficulties, the wall has about a 14% chance to drop a Vanity Wall of Flesh Mask, and a 10% chance to drop a trophy. On Expert or Master mode, it will always drop a Demon Heart if you haven't already consumed one, which can be eaten to grant an additional accessory slot, which is very nice. Master mode always drops a Relic, and has a 10% chance to drop the Goat Skull, which summons a Goat Mount that is pretty fast and has a double jump. On all difficulties, you can also get Badger's Hat if you've also killed the Eye of Cthulhu in the same 24-hour in-game period starting at 7.30pm. This is a vanity item in honor of the Twitch streamer and Terraria speedrunner of the same name. As for an arena, this fight is quite a bit different from most fights so far in the game in that you are required to move in one direction the entire fight and will of necessity travel quite a long distance depending on your gear and the difficulty level. One option that requires almost no preparation is to simply use a water walking potion, lava waders, or terra spark boots, each of which will allow you to safely run on the underworld's lava. It's probably a good idea to smooth out the hills to ensure you don't get stuck anywhere though, but if you're on top of your movement game and have good DPS, it shouldn't be too hard to defeat the boss using this method, especially on classic difficulty. My personal preference though, is to build a long runway out of stone blocks, going out from either side of the middle of the world, or starting on one of the ends of the world and heading towards the middle. The reason I prefer to use stone blocks, particularly in the middle of the world, is that once you've entered hard mode, this runway will get hit by the hard mode V, and a portion of it will be converted into the Hollow's Pearl Stone, while the other side will convert to your world's evil biome block. And because you don't get the stronger underworld lava baths or red devils until after a mechanical boss has been defeated, having hollow and evil biome areas in the underworld will make for some pretty safe and open areas for farming souls of light and souls of night that will be needed for many hard mode crafting recipes. Additionally, the areas just above the underworld can be great spots for finding hard mode ore, particularly adamantite and titanium, and having a nice smooth runway will make it even easier to locate and mine these valuable resources. If you're on Expert or Master Mode difficulty, be sure to place one block gaps in your runway periodically so that lava that spills out from defeated lava slimes will drain out of the area. And although you could place spaced out campfires, heart lanterns, and other arena buffs across the length of your runway, I've generally never found this necessary and tend to only place them in areas that I'm planning to farm mobs. The other benefit of using stone blocks as opposed to platforms or even planter boxes is that stone will frequently block the laser fire of the lower eye, greatly decreasing the incoming DPS you'll have to deal with. As far as how long of a runway to build, I always do at least a full stack of 999 stone, but if you try the boss and run out of runway, definitely add some more, and some weapons can get by with a whole lot less. You also might want more on Expert or Master mode, as the boss's higher defense and health on those difficulty levels will require more space, again, depending on what weapon you're using. For any constructed runways, you can greatly boost the speed of the project by using a Builder Potion, 
and the Bricklayer or its upgrade, the Architect Gizmo Pack accessories. And if any Voodoo Demons show up while building, be sure to run back a ways before killing them to ensure that no dolls fall into the lava. It's also a good idea to destroy a decent amount of any buildings your runway passes through so they don't get in the way of your attacks or hinder your mobility. And finally, let's talk about gear loadouts. On classic difficulty, the boss really isn't a challenge using whatever your best weapons and armor normally would be at this point. Melee players can do just fine getting up close and personal with the boss using swords that have auto swing by default, like the Knight's Edge or Beekeeper, as they allow you to swing opposite of the direction you're moving. Feral Claws will let you swing even faster, and be sure to have an Obsidian Shield to prevent getting knocked around by Hungry, Leeches, or the boss if you happen to get hit by it. If you prefer to keep your distance, then on classic difficulty, a big flail like the Sun Fury works decently well, and a yo-yo like the Cascade, a rare drop from the Underworld, can also do good damage against the boss, though you'll definitely want to use a string to increase your range, and will probably want to use a sword to deal with the Hungry. Other than that, just wear Molten Armor, use Regeneration and Iron Skin buffs if needed, and definitely have a food buff active, and you'll down the boss no problem. On Expert or Master Mode, however, I simply do not recommend using melee at all against this boss, as its increased speed and the damage it deals if it hits you, in addition to the increased damage from the lasers, really makes it so you don't want to be up close and personal to the Wall of Flesh. Add in the fact that the Hungry respawn and really do a lot more damage, which increases as the boss gets hurt, melee is just at a huge disadvantage, largely due to its lack of effective options to deal damage at range. But if you do want to try it, be sure to make an extra long runway, probably blanket it with the arena buffs, use all the potions you think you might want, and probably go with the Star Fury so you can keep your distance, relying on the star projectiles it brings down from above. If using this method, you'll probably need to raise the roof of the underworld to ensure that the projectiles don't get stuck on their way to the boss. All the other classes, however, have it much easier than melee on expert or master mode, and probably the best class to beat it is the ranger. Rangers have several options available on classic difficulty and can do quite well with the Hellwing bow and wooden arrows, as the bats it fires have infinite piercing and will cut straight through the hungry and hit the boss. The Phoenix Blaster is the strongest gun at this point of the game, though I find its lack of auto fire to be a bit obnoxious. If you don't mind clicking incessantly though, it does work pretty well. And if you do mind clicking incessantly, thankfully the Mini Shark actually still works pretty well on classic difficulty, and with either gun you'll want to use Meteor Shot for your bullets. If you've gathered a ton of stars or are in a journey world, the Star Cannon will make short work of the Wall of Flesh on all difficulties, so you'll probably want at least 2 to 300 stars on Master Mode. On Expert or Master Mode, I would probably go with the Star Cannon if I have the stars, or just stick with the Hellwing and avoid all the clicking. Necro Armor will boost your damage output, and you'll want to use a Magiluminescence, Lightning Boots are better, Fledgling Wings, and probably a Stinger Necklace. On Expert or Master Mode, the Shield of Cthulhu will give you some added mobility, and on Master Mode, you might want to add in a Band of Regeneration for some added health regen. Whatever the difficulty, you'll want to keep the wall just on the edge or even a little off screen, and let loose with your weapon of choice until the wall is defeated. Try aiming for the eyes when possible, and so long as you keep your distance, you should do fine. Like Rangers, the mage has several good options for taking down the wall of flesh, especially on classic difficulty where any weapon with piercing should get the job done well. Even a ruby or diamond staff without any particular damage or mana efficiency accessories will work. The B gun also works decently well, and if you don't mind being a bit closer to the boss, the Aqua Scepter is also pretty effective. Better options though are the pre-hard mode spell books, namely Water Bolt from the Dungeon, the Book of Skulls from Skeletron, or the Demon Scythe from Underworld Demons. On all difficulties, if you are having mana problems, the Celestial Magnet and its upgrades the Celestial Cuffs or the Magnet Flower will really help, as defeated Hungry, Leeches, and other mobs in the area will drop mana stars, and these accessories will greatly increase your pickup range of those stars. The Magnet Flower will also automatically use mana potions and increases mana efficiency, 
while the Celestial Cuffs will increase your maximum mana by 20 and restore some mana whenever you take damage. Also be sure to have mana power and mana regeneration potions active, and plenty of mana potions in your inventory. If you want to avoid mana entirely, then the Space Gun with the Meteor Armor Suit also works on Classic Difficulty, but I wouldn't use it on Expert or Master Mode as its DPS is quite a bit lower than the other, better options. And if you don't mind clicking a lot, the Grey Zappinator also works well on Classic Difficulty, but again, I wouldn't use it on the higher levels. Like the Space Gun, the Zappinator also requires no mana if you are wearing Meteor Armor. On Expert or Master Mode, my top weapon picks for mages would be the Water Bolt or Demon Scythe, as they allow you to really keep your distance and will do plenty of damage to the boss even as the hungry continue to respawn during the fight. You may want to add an Obsidian Shield to your accessory lineup though to avoid getting juggled by knockback when taking damage, and the Shield of Cthulhu can also be nice to give you a little boost of speed away from the boss. If not using the Meteor set, the best mage DPS armor at this stage of the game is the Wizard Hat, Mystic Robe, and Meteor Leggings. All things considered though, Mage is a very strong option for taking down the Wall of Flesh, particularly on the higher difficulty levels, second only to the Ranger. And finally we have the Summoner. On classic difficulty, it absolutely shreds the Wall of Flesh using Obsidian Armor, Summoned Imps, and toggling between the Snapthorn and Spinal Tap Whips using the Feral Claws accessory. Just stay a little bit ahead of the boss and it will be defeated in no time. On Expert and Master Mode though, Summoners suffer from the same limitations as Warriors, sharing the inability to do high DPS when not up close to the boss. The best method I've found for Expert is to again use Obsidian Armor and the Snapthorn Spinal Tap combo for the first half of the fight, but as the boss starts to move faster and shoot more lasers, you'll want to run well away from the wall so you can still see it on the edge of your minimap, and then spam Ballista Sentry weapons from the Tavern Keep. These things fire immediately when cast, and if you place them near you, their piercing shots should generally still hit the wall even if they target a leech or hungry. Just be sure to have mana potions on hand as well as mana regeneration potions active, as you don't want to run out of mana when spamming the Ballisti. This method should also work on Master Mode, but you'll need a much longer runway and honestly, unless you're doing a pure summoner run which is beyond the scope of this beginner's guide series, you're just much better off going with a Ranger and a Hellwing or Star Cannon, or a Mage with Water Bolt or Demon Scythe, as those options really are just so much better than anything the Summoner has available at this stage of the game. And that's it for the Wall of Flesh! Again, it's really quite an easy boss on Classic difficulty and not too bad for Rangers or Mages in Expert or Master Mode. The Warriors and Summoners will struggle on these higher difficulties. And once defeated, the Ancient Spirits of Light and Dark will be released and you'll enter Hard Mode which, in my view, is where the real fun of Terraria begins. In the next episode I'll go over early Hard Mode upgrades you'll want to nab as soon as possible, discuss progressing through the tiers of Hard Mode ores, and otherwise get you prepared for the next big trio of challenges, the Mechanical Bosses. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one! Cheers!